camera is running. We're good? We're good. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 9 a.m. second day of WEF here in The Hague. This is actually my first, my second trip back to a WEF event. I was here last year in The Hague, and I think I got... Um, Oh, I would say I think I got addicted or just attracted to the entire energy of Women Economic Forum and the spirit of it. But then as I was, I was, I was flying over here, I thought, you know, this isn't my second trip. This is my fourth trip to the Netherlands. And I have to say, I love it. Growing up, I would have never thought, no, I would have thought I'd be here because one of my earliest recollections, which kind of speaks for what I do today and how the intentions of our hearts and our minds actually get us where we want to go is um, I grew up right outside of New York City in New Jersey and my grandfather used to fly on airplanes a lot uh, in the course of his work and I loved my grandfather who was a very influential man and a very good man too and um, I would look at the airplanes in the sky and I think, oh, where are they going? And who's on those airplanes? And I want to get up on those airplanes. And to me, the idea of flight had everything to do with freedom, number one. I would think of, you know, birds flying and just being free. Um, but the second part of it was I had this thought in my mind of meeting the world. Now, some people get used to their family. They get used to their neighborhood, maybe their immediate community. But for me... I had in my heart space, the entire world, and I saw it as all of my unmet relatives and friends. And this is why, why I bring it full circle to, um, to the Netherlands, um, is because growing up, we would probably have this picture book as children, and they would show you different peoples and different countries. And back then in the early 60s, you would also see native costumes. So I remember the Chinese people and what they would wear, very different from our Western wear. But I remember thinking to myself, I wonder if those people wear wooden shoes. Now, where do they wear wooden shoes? But in Holland and in the Netherlands area. And I thought, how crazy, here I am so many decades later. And although my early years were uh, usually taken up with being indoors, even though I always wanted to be outside, I think now, because of those early intentions of my heart and those early desires to go out and to make friends with the world, that now I have visited somewhere between 50 and 60 countries. And I'm so thrilled because each time I go out, I meet new friends and there's an exchange of energy. There's an exchange of cultures. Um, and I also think there's like an exchange of DNA. Everything that I do, I look to unify the human race. And I didn't realize growing up how um, people really see themselves as different rather than alike. And so anyway, glad to be here. And it sort of is a good segue for where we're going. Today's topic, values and influential factors that determine the success of female leaders. When I think about leaders, I don't think just women in the same way that I think about the whole world. I don't, I usually don't segment people. I don't think I ever do young, old, rich, poor, black, white, whatever, um, Asian, Western, but the same holds true with leaders. I've always seen people as people. In fact, most of the time I have a difficult time remembering people's names and also their faces. And yet I can see someone or get together with someone after 15, 20, even 25 years. And once I'm remembering who that person is, because again, I don't remember by the face or the names, but I will pull out something about that person that they shared with me years ago. And they'll say to me, I told you that? I didn't know I told that to anybody or I can't believe you remember that. That goes into where I live. I live in the heart space. I live in probably the spirits that dwell within people. And it goes all the way back to how I relate to other people and really everything I do today. I'm a podcaster, I'm an author, I'm a blogger, and I do uh, international speaking. But uh, beyond that, I'm also on a lot of radio and podcast shows, and all I look to do is help people to see their neighbors, to see their friends, whether these people are next door or around the world, whether they're wealthier or poorer, more educated or less. I always 
try to help people see others from the inside out. And my mantra is living happy from the inside out. It has everything to do with finding those things in our hearts that are very important, finding that authentic self, and then encouraging and inspiring people to live out of that space. So let's talk about that from a position of values and influential leaders. I guess the first question to ask is, do you think you need a title to be a leader? Is it necessary to have a title to be a leader? Um, can I have that? Because I yeah. Absolutely. Uh, my brain says it isn't necessary. And in the course of my working life, I've found that people who don't know you um, are well, a title is more, it gives you more credibility. True. And um, if they don't know you, they first look to a title. And then, they... and then they sort of give you the credibility. So I don't have a title. Um, I have studied, but I don't have a title. And um, my findings are that I have to work a bit harder than others that have a title. They have the credibility already. And I have to work for... Uh... <laughs> That's a very incisive answer. And thank you, because you added something to that. Uh, oh, oh. oh, sorry. We're being filmed. That is such um, an intuitive answer, a smart answer, and, uh, and a very accurate one, too. Because most people, if they have a business card, they show it and they'll say, who, hi, who are you? Well, I'm the CEO of the ABC company or the company by my own name. And oftentimes people will affix to you an assumed credibility because of the title. But how interesting that you would say that uh, you have had to work harder in order to gain credibility because you don't have a title. Well, the answer to your question when you said your mind, I thought you were going to say your heart says that in order to be a leader, you don't need a title. Um, and I do agree with you on both accounts. You don't need a title uh, in order to be a leader. Hello. However, you um, do need a certain amount of influence, energy, practice. Um, you have to be possessive. Hello. Hello. Can I just say before? Absolutely. Right. Because you have so uh, few here. Yes. Have you an opportunity to talk at the plenary if you want? Oh, sure. If that's okay with you, the cameraman, guess what? I would love that. Right? Sure. Okay. So if you, you didn't know how few we were. Have <laughs> <laughs> an audience Are you one. speaking also? Hey? No, what she's my know? audience. Oh. Not yet. That's she, she, but if you wanted mine. I love, are you kidding? Right, right now, or do you want to finish I mean, this one? I'm kidding. I mean, thank you. Do you want to finish, uh, you know? Uh, for, well, uh, I'm... I think I'm we're better off just... Yeah, but I still want to hear your answer. Okay. And you'll be able to edit me? Okay. So... After all, sir, we're all okay. <laughs> all right. So here is my feeling. Number one, no, we do not need a title to be a leader. However, titles can give us credibility. When we are a person of influence, when we are a person of integrity, as in someone who has been tested over and over and over again in terms of our belief systems, our value systems, our practice in what it is that we do and what's important to us in the world. And as we continuously live in that space, our body, our energy, our mind come into a unity so that people do not need to see an affixed title to our name. We can literally walk into a space and people will perceive the sense of leadership that is already there because it's an energy. And I have to say this from, from decades of experience and places I have been is that I have been around several people with very, very high titles. And what I've noticed is that if they are not tested, practiced, um, full of their own integrity, um, practiced over a long period of time, and especially during times of challenge, that they may have a title and they may be given some form of um, automatic respect and credibility. But when they are pressed, their lack of fullness becomes evident. 
meaning there's a facade, but there is not enough behind the facade to support the title that is there. And that's one reason why I speak so much on leadership and influence, because the true influencer, the true leader is someone who's got a capacity and an energy and an integrity and a belief system that is so highly practiced, so manifest and physically manifest that they need not run after worldly titles. And when it comes to women who may be in, in countries or in environments where they're not easily given titles, they need to know that the respect, the sense of authority, the sense of dignity that is due them can come regardless of whether or not mankind or humankind gives them or affixes to them a specific title. And to know that truth and to walk in that truth takes a lot of courage. It takes time. It takes practice. And a lot of times it takes trials and challenges of life. But those very things are the elements that literally take, let's say, um, an idea or a concept from fragility, you know, when, I, when you think about glass being very fragile, to almost the, uh, the strength of a diamond. It still looks um, clear. It's a gem, but it is highly practiced. It's been placed under a lot of pressure, and it doesn't break. And when I think about who I would like to follow in life as a leader or who I would like to emulate or, or listen to, it would be to those people who are so highly practiced in their belief systems, their value systems. They have lived them out that their words carry a life and that life can easily transfer and transmit to others and on a larger scale, transform the world. All right. All right. How's that for an audience of one? Okay. <laughs> so right away. All right. But you know, do you realize because of your answer, I don't know how to turn this off. Is it this little? Yeah.